everyone here welcome back to my channel once again so today i'm going to be reflecting that yellow dress that i wore for my son's birthday you know underneath the post a lot of people ask that i should make this real that dress and yeah it was just one of those quick makes you know that you just say okay let me just put two and two together and come up with something nice okay that was what i did for that dress i didn't film the making of the dress but then thankfully a client saw that too person asked me to make for her so we're going to be creating that for my client today so that there will be a little twist to our own it's still the same style but then i'm thinking if possible if i could incorporate you know that pleated slit in front because i don't think she would like to have an open slit in front i don't know i'm just thinking so i might i might put the pleating slit in front i'm i'm still thinking i don't know how possible or how feasible that is gonna be but I'll just see if it will work out. Wait, if otherwise then I'll just I'll just stick to the original style. So that's just going to be the little difference between mine and this one that we're going to be creating. I think this one is more fun. So let's get into it. So for this style today, I'm going to be using four yards of this lace fabric, and also you need your black material for the color area. For this black material, you can use Dutch satin. You can use satin itself. You can use raw silk. You can even use Ankara, depends on the look you're looking out for. It doesn't really matter whether it's plain or it's not plain, just be creative with it. But I'm sticking to the Bermuda style, which is black. So I use black satin, uh, I use black touches satin, but you can just use our regular satin, you know, that doll face, you know, stuff like that. But I'm using touches satin. So you fold your fabric into two. Like I said, it is four yards, so I'm folding it into two like this. Then after that, I'll fold it downward into four, such that I'll have the upper part unfold, okay? So this part is unfold. Here also is unfold. So the next thing you have to do is to measure. So we're going to use the total width that we have here. We're not going to remove anything from this width that is already there. So next, I'll measure down where the cow is going to start from. And I'm going to make this, the cow to start at 31 inches. From here, I measure 31 inches. Then you also measure the length of the gown. My gown length is 62. Then I added seam allowance, okay? So stopping here. The next thing, from the folded edge here inward, you're going to put the hip circumference measurement divided by 4. My client's hip measurement is 42 divided by 4. That will be 10 and a half. Then I'm going to add two inches to it. These two inches include ease and seam allowance. Then I'll go to the hemline. I'm going to subtract one and a half from what I have here now. Here I have, I have 12 and a half, so I'm going to put 11 here. Okay, so I subtract one and a half from what I have here so that it can be pencil. Then I'll connect it together. Then the next thing, I'm going to do is just to create the the cuff, the cow effect. Can you see? So from here, just create like a cuff to get your cow effect. There's no measurement like for this cuff. It's just you that will round your hand in a cuff way to come and meet the hand point. And basically, that's all. So. So the next thing I'm going to do is to put the neckline. So starting from the folded edge again, you are going to measure the width of the neck. I'm going to use four inches for the width, for the neck width. And then for the back neck depth, I'm going to do one and a half. So I'll connect it like this. Can you see? Then for the front neckline, so I'm going to first off measure, I'll measure to the I'll measure to the nipple point line which is 10 and a half the nipple point line is 10 and a half then on this 10 and a half I'm going to measure one and a half inward one and a half and then I'll connect to the neck width and then from this one and a half I'll release all the way down First off, I'll cut the back neckline. 
like this. Can you see? Then I'll cut the shape out also. So you measure your sleeve opening where your hand will come out from. For that, I'm going to be doing eight inches for where the hand is going to come out from. I will do eight inches from the upper part, eight inches like this. And then from the upper part, it's just going to be straight to that point first before you now follow the curved shape, okay? We are done cutting cutting it out so the first thing i'm going to do now before i can cut the front the way my fabric is folded i have the front on top like the first two is going to be the front can you see the first two will be the front why the last two is going to be the back the way it's folded you know i first fold it like this before bending it downward such that you know this place now we have two piece that is unfold here is unfold here is also unfold do you understand then the whole of this place is unfold so the first two now this first two is going to be the front so i will just remove the back from it so the last two is going to be the back right so it's just going to be like this then i'm going to cut the front neckline now don't forget the front the front neckline is running all the way to the hem line can you see so the next thing you have to do is just to measure starting from the center back this for that edge is the center back so starting from here you measure the neck all the way to the hemline whatever you get that's what you're going to be using to cut out the strap and you know it's into two now so if i measure now if i have let me just measure so after measuring i got 67 inches and you're going to be multiplying that 67 by two because the fabric is into two fourths obviously so let's i'm going to be cutting out what i'll use to create the color and for that it's going to be a stretch something it's going to be five inches so i'm going to fuse it with my interfacing I've joined the pieces together to have the length that I want. So the next thing now is just to fold it into two like this. You will first decide where you want the neck depth to be. If you have watched that jumpsuit tutorial, I told you I like it to be at 14 inches. Let me bring the body so that you understand. Can you see? This is the center back. So basically the front neckline is starting from like around here. So you just measure where you want the depth to stop. And then from your center back, just measure it all around to that point. Whatever it is, that's what you're going to use. Okay. So, but most case, you usually fall around 14 for me. Okay. Usually fall around 14. And you see, this is 14 too. So from here now, from the joining at the center back, because I joined the center back, I told you the length is not going to be enough. You have to join to make up for the length, or except if you have a long strip that you can use, and that will waste, waste fabric. Okay, so I'll just measure the 14. So this is the 14. Can you see? Or you can just use C from the center back, just place it on it like this. And trace it to where the neck will stop and then you also measure where you want the slit to stop as well maybe from the hemline you want the slit to be from the hemline of the gown maybe you want the slit to be 22 inches for example maybe you want it to be 20 22 or whatever length that you want so from the hemline let's say i want the slit to be 20 inches from the hemline so from the hemline i'll measure the 20 inches okay so when you measure when you measure your stripe, you know, let me just use it to measure it now. 
you can see the slit is up in here and you see this is the position of the slit like this this is the position of the slit so from the from here to here is the neck opening right then it's folded into two don't forget i already joined it long and then i fold it back into two this is going to be the center back of the collar you can see it's a strip just a long strip of fabric okay so this is going to be the center back so from that center back you make sure the neck depth how you want how low you want it to be so we've marked it so from here now you saw at the middle of this panel it's already placed together make sure you locate the center of the panel and you saw at the center all the way to where you want your slit to be in front okay whatever you want your slit to be that's where you are going to stop i want to try something new fold the color into two equal half and you iron it so that you can locate the center of the collar then after that bend half inch inside like this i bend half inch inside because i told you i want to try something new okay like i i want it to be i don't want i don't want to weave this i want it to be very neat like you know the way we used to show the collar that you not see the sewing that's what i intend doing with this so first of all First of all, you bend the collar into two. After fusing it with your interfacing, you fold it into two like this. So we have done it. It's just for you to locate the center. Okay. Once you are able, once you iron it, you can fix it directly like this. That's the way we have been doing it in most of the tutorials. But this one, I want us to do something very neat like we have to practice something new once you locate the center center of the collar like this i'm going to fold half inch i'll fold half inch in like this and i'll iron it okay see So just bend half inch inward and iron okay then you now take to your machine you sew this other side when you are done you top stitch this part okay so i'm going to do it exactly the way i have explained it to you So this is the position where i mark where the slit is going to stop so you take back to your mesh to your ironing table you just open it this way just open it like this turn it to the good side and then it's going to just be like this and you give it a good press and you see the way it is now so you iron it you iron it nicely then you attach it to the neckline okay so i've opened up the bubble this is the center back this is the center of the back neckline so i will just match this joining together and this is the wrong side of the dress so the center back joining i'm going to just align it together like this open it up match up the joining together you pin then you sew all the way to the right and also all the way to the left when you are done you will top stitch this other side that you have used your iron to bend to the good side you see that we are going to do it on the sewing machine okay. 
so I've, I'm done with one side. I'll go back now to the center back again and I will stitch the second side. can see I'm done attaching it to the neckline so the next thing now is just to turn the collar to the good side and then you top stitch the collar so attach one side of the collar the next thing now is just to push all your seam allowance inward and you top stitch on the collar so from the wrong side see the wrong side see how neat it is from the wrong side so let's finish the front let's finish the good side now so yeah you will see it you understand what we have been doing so starting from the M line, can you see? Push all your seam allowance inside like this, and then you top stitch the collar. Okay? Push your seam allowance inside and top stitch. So I'm done. The next thing now is just to close the side. You can see it's neat from the this is the good side, it's very neat. Can you see? And then the wrong side also is neat. That's what I was trying to achieve so that we don't have to weave it. This is the wrong side. You can see how neat it is. Can you see? It's neat. There's no seam allowance showing both on the good side and on the wrong side. Can you see? So when you are tostation this, you may just go to your iron table, tuck in hemming gum, iron it flat first before you just come back and run your stitch instead of tostation directly. If you, if you put hemming gum, it will be a lot easier for you. I didn't think of that. I would have told you to do that before I tostitch, but because, you know, this is what I do on a daily basis. I'm already used to it, whether I put hemming gum or not. So you can just put hemming gum first and iron before you come around the last stitch on it okay so the last thing now is just to close the side so i want to put that slit so if it's only slit you want this is how it's going to look and it's already given like just the way i have mine can you see can you see your slit you already have your slit in front if it's slit you want but i want to see if i can create this awusa slit in front okay let me close this and wait for the mannequin so that you can see the style first before I proceed to the other method that I intend doing. So I'm going to be closing the side now, even though I'm still going to lose the back because I want to put pleating slit in front. But I'm just going to close it so that I can wear for mannequin so that people that love that my style and want it exactly like my, my style can have it. Okay, so that they can see the final look. And tomorrow I'm going to... Come back here and show you how you can create the pleated slit in front. So just enjoy the rest of the video. I'm I'm sewing with a gathering stitch because I'm still going to be loosening this. I will still create pleat in front on that slit. So if you want to see how I'm going to create that, make sure you tune in tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to show you how I'm going to create the pleated slit in front. Okay. So like we said, we want the sleeve opening to be 8 inches. So from the top now, from the folded edge, just measure down the 8 inches. And then when you reach there, just backstitch and stop. Okay. Then the next is just to aim the sleeve opening by just opening it like this. And then you create the fold, like you fold the round sleeve. Okay. Then you also do the same thing to the second side. Making moves like a ninja. I could play it cool like I'm winter. I can make it rain like a cash tsunami. Wanna slip and slide? We can link up. We 
Working all the time, make you duller Be a student, try to make a dollar Wanna live life like I'm on vacation 